5% growth in agriculture and fisheries for the January to September quarters. Sugar Barracks Relocation Project takes life. And Agroparks Producing Our Way to Food Security. The Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries making major moves in 2013. Topping the 2013 agenda for Agriculture and Fisheries Minister Roger Clark was reducing the country's high food import bill in support of government's strategy to achieve fiscal prudence and a credible economic program. We are going to get out there and produce, to feed ourselves, to export, and to make sure that that $1 billion import bill for food in this country is cut down to a manageable level. Among the initiatives to make that happen, grow import substitute crops. Sorghum was identified as a substitute for grain in animal feed. The ministry partnered with investor farmers to dedicate several acres of land for its production. As the ministry worked to cut the food import bill, farmers were also assisted and encouraged to produce greater volumes of the traditional and non-traditional crops to supply local demand. The flagship initiative was the development of nine agro-parks. Three became operational during the calendar year. Onion, scallion, pepper, assorted fruits and vegetables, yam, ginger, hay, sorghum and other crops are now in full production at Planted Gardens in St. Thomas, Amity Hall in St. Catherine and Ebony Park in Clarendon. I must say that I am, I am reasonably satisfied um, about the progress we have made, understanding that we virtually started from scratch. The other six agro-parks are expected to come on stream by 2014 and the preparations are on in earnest to meet this deadline. The Agriculture Ministry also targeted a greater share of the local Irish potato market. A $68 million project was launched in October to assist farmers with crop care and position them to benefit from improved market access. The sector now produces 8% of local consumption with the aim to achieve 100% by 2015. Through partnership, the ministry also provided training and seeds to produce two hectares of a new variety of the crop to supply the potato fries market, which relies heavily on importation. Economic growth is one of government's five strategic priorities for the 2013-2014 fiscal year. When we eat what is grown locally by our local farmers, we support them, increase their incomes, increase their ability to care for their families, expand the economy of their local rural communities, and consequently expand the growth of the wider national economy. So, in its 10th year, the E-Jamaican campaign was revved up. Policies were also implemented to secure consumer confidence in local produce. The National Food Safety Policy and Implementation Plan, which provides the framework for the installation of the requisite legal institutional framework and infrastructure to secure public health through the delivery of safe foods for both local and export consumption. The Food and Nutrition Security Policy was also approved by Cabinet on February 25. The activities of the Agriculture Ministry in calendar year 2013 were also driven by a strategic policy to increase production across the board for the export market. When drought conditions early in the year threatened to derail those efforts, the Ministry rolled out a $45 million crop production program to maintain the availability of high-demand crops. Irrigation facilities were also commissioned to pump water to farming communities in Duff House New Forest in Manchester and other areas across the island. And to build a disaster-resilient sector, the Food and Agriculture Organization provided a $30 million grant to assist St. Thomas and Portland farmers affected by Hurricane Sandy. To ensure that farmers get their produce to the markets, the ministry initiated a stakeholders workshop on Prairie Larceny. A way forward action plan is to be drafted from those talks and taken to cabinet and parliament. Sugarcane continued to be an important part of the country's export portfolio and a massive planting exercise was implemented during the year. Through the Cane Expansion Fund, 8,000 hectares of new land was earmarked for production. Of the $4 billion needed, Close to $2 billion was placed in the fund in 2013. 
Meanwhile, over 44 kilometers of cane roads in six parishes were identified for rehabilitation under a contract valued at more than $404 million. This project will improve the efficiency of cane harvesting operations in our sugar sector and reduce the significant post-harvest losses, which are estimated at 3% of national cane production. The Fisheries Division also received much-needed attention in 2013. Through a $10 million pilot project, the industry is now ready to benefit from the production of silver tilapia freshwater fish for local and overseas markets. And to standardize the production of ornamental fish, a manual titled Jamaica Ornamental Fish Quality Assurance Program was crafted and presented to the ministry. This manual is designed to guide, standardize and certify the operations of some 100 fish farmers and put them at an advantage to tap into the 400 million US dollar export market. A bill which sets out to protect the sector from imports was passed in the House of Representatives in July. It looks to secure our waters from foreign poachers. At the end of the day, the process must be efficient and effective, both in terms of cost and results, by ensuring that foreign poachers, when caught, are dealt with expeditiously and decisively in our courts, and moreover, they are dissuaded in the strongest way possible from poaching in our waters. Be they fishers or farmers, in 2013, government was also concerned with meeting the social needs of those who feed the nation. The administration's efforts resulted in groundbreakings for several developments under the Sugar Barracks Relocation Project, designed to resettle 876 residents of Sugar Estate Barracks in 400 newly constructed housing solutions at seven relocation sites. The work is near completion at three of the seven sites. The other four are at advanced infrastructure stages. The project is being funded by the European Union at a cost of $1.4 billion. Substituting import crops, supplying the local demand, encouraging consumption of local produce, exporting more, multiplying fisheries output, and effecting social inclusion. A strategic successful plan of action for the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries in calendar year 2013. It supports fiscal prudence, job creation, and economic growth. 